What's going on guys, Sticks here from the Token Minorities, bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO, and today I am bringing you a deck centered around Lapras GX from the Sun and Moon expansion, well not expansion, the Sun and Moon base set, and before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you guys like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, and maybe subscribe, it really does help us out a lot, and lets us do more for you guys, and as for the question of the day, uh, I was trying to think of one and I was looking at the lineup of cards I had right here and I noticed how different the full art on Lapras is from say like Glaceon and Shaman where Glaceon and Shaman both have some stuff going on in the background while the new full arts are generally just a solid color and my question of the day really does stem from that and which full art uh I guess which full art style do you prefer do you like just the solid background color with the emphasis on the Pokemon or do you like the whole like everything going on the Pokemon taking over the full card and something cool going on in the background honestly I like the new style of the full arts a lot better than the other G than the other uh, full art cards I mean don't get me wrong they still look really really cool and there's definitely some awesome combinations but I really just I like the simplicity of it it really does leave the focus entirely on the Pokemon and not all that is going on in the background. And don't get me wrong, things like the Full Art Secret Rare Gardevoir where Eveltal's in the background and then like, I think Alakazam, Gyarados, and Volcanion are the other ones where they have Full Arts, but there's also some Pokemon going on in the background. I think those are super, super sick. Like, I love those. I think those are so awesome. And if all the cards were like that, that would just be so cool. But in general, between the Full Art EXs and the Full Art GXs, I like the GX style. I just like simple background, Pokemon on the front, and that's it. But let me got, let me know which uh, style you guys prefer in the comment section below and why. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. But anyway, onto the deck. Like I said, centered around Lapras GX, and this is basically reminiscent of the Water Box deck that did that was so successful in uh the tc in the standard tcg a while ago and uh, basically lapras is just going to replace seismitoad and honestly this deck has fallen out of favor of a lot the big thing with water box was that it was able to counter the most popular decks at the time where like seismitoad and articuno were able to destroy night march rough seas in itself was able to destroy trevenant uh etc etc glaceon could take on the mega decks and, su and stuff like that this new water box isn't really as good because you don't have the devastating item lock that Seismitoad could provide. However, Lapras is still a very cool addition, and this deck still has some viability. I wouldn't say it's top tier at all, but I would say that it is still a pretty solid deck and not a horrible choice if you decide to run a Lapras GX deck. But anyway, looking at Lapras, very, very bulky basic, 190 HP. 230 with a Fighting Fury Belt. This thing does not die, especially with Rough Seas. I mean, just if you can't one-shot this guy, you're going to have a lot of trouble knocking it out. And as for the attacks, collect, single energy, draw three cards. Decent, but you don't want to have to use it. The attack that you really want to be using is Blizzard Burn. 160 damage for three energy. That's pretty solid. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. I think that that just kind of destroys all usefulness that Lapras potentially would have had in a uh, via in terms of viability in the metagame if blizzard burn says this pokemon can't use this attack during your next turn i think that that would make lapras a lot better but the fact that blizzard burn says this pokemon can't attack means that you have to have another pokemon powered up in the background you can't just collect or ice beam gx after you use blizzard burn i mean if you have Bl if you use blizzard burn you better have something as a backup on the bench ready to attack next turn otherwise you're just kind of sol or have the means of being able to get la of resetting the uh the effect on lapras as for the gx attack very mediocre i think this is honestly one of the worst gx attacks that we have been able to see because ice beam gx so first off a gx attack that does 100. now if this had some absurd ability i think that that would be a lot better but the fact, but the uh, attack is your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. I mean, that's, don't get me wrong. Guaranteed paralysis is good, but I think that if you're going to have a GX attack, you better have like a, 
This, uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed and your opponent can't use abilities during the next turn or your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed and your opponent can't play items. Something that prevents your opponent from being able to just be like, oh, okay, switch or rush in or escape rope or something like that. I mean, paralysis, while it's good, isn't worthy of a GX attack unless it keeps your opponent from being able to use all the type of different things to get out of it. There's so many different ways to get out of paralysis that it's kind of ridiculous. So I think that Ice Beam GX needs to be like 200 in your opponent's paralyzed. That way you can at least have an absurd amount of damage on there. But nope, only 100 in paralysis. Don't get me wrong. It's a solid attack that has use in a good amount of situations. But overall, I think Ice Beam GX is just a very, very underwhelming attack. That being said, being able to Blizzard Burn for 170 makes me want to build a deck around this, which I did. For the rest of the Pokemon, we have three Shaman EX because Shaman is Shaman and you draw cards. Two Glaceon EX because, I mean, this is part of the water box strategy. Having the ability to, I mean, just Crystal Ray and shut down your opponent's evolutions. Two Manaphy for that free retreat that helps uh, water box so well. And then only one Regice. Usually I would put two, but because GXs are all the rage now, Red Ice is Resistance Blizzard until it gets an errata where it says uh, prevent all effects of attacks including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EX and Pokemon GX. Red Ice, I mean, your opponent has an easy way around Red Ice with just using EX or well, GX attacks as opposed to EX. So, I mean, it still has use against EX heavy decks. However, I mean, it's Resistance Blizzard is only EX, EX decks and everybody's using GXs now because of the new toys. So, Red Ice isn't as useful. As for the items, okay, the search items, very, very much like kind of a whatever whatever you best think. Okay, first of all, I think three dive ball, that's a given. You need to use three dive ball because water Pokemon are your basic strategy. You can also use nest ball. However, the thing with nest ball is you can't take advantage of Shaman. I mean, nest ball takes it directly from your deck and puts it onto the bench. However, Shaman, you need to get it into your hand then play it down. So, I mean... I'm kind of torn as to what kind of line I want to run. Honestly, I could see perfect viability in getting rid of all the Nest Ball and just doing four Ultra Ball, four Dive Ball, or getting rid of, or making four Ultra Ball, three Energy Switches, three Dive Ball, and getting rid of Nest Ball. I just wanted to try it out because it came out in this set and is a really cool option. Definitely, definitely look into this and try out different lines for yourself. This is just one that I tested a little bit and I decided to just go with for this live. But yeah, three dive ball, three nest ball, and two ultra ball is the searching line for this deck. Two energy switches. That way you can like have a Lapras active, attach an energy, do a max elixir onto like a shaman or a manaphy, something you don't want to have an energy on. And then be able to just energy switch onto something that you really want to actually have it on. Now, energy switch, I know, is not a card that's in every single deck. In fact, this is really the only deck that I run in standard or expanded that runs energy switch. However, I think it's still a very, very good card in this deck. That's why it has a spot. For max elixir, for acceleration, all of our Pokemon are basic. So you can go ahead and max elixir onto them. Uh, three Nest Ball, like I said. One Super Rod to get back some of our resources should we have to discard them. Four Trainer's Mail to help with consistency. The Ultra Ball, again, like I said, the searching line. Four VS Secret to reuse all of our supporters. And then as for the supporters, I'm running kind of a weird line. I mean, you have the 4-2 of N and Sycamore. I mean, that's nothing weird about that. That's just my general line. You have the one Pokemon Ranger because this deck would have a ton of trouble against Jolteon. I mean, that in itself would give this deck so many problems. So instead of like just relying on Lysander, I decided to throw Pokemon Ranger in because not only does it help with Jolteon, it has the added tech of being able to allow Lapras to Blizzard Burn in consecutive turns. Usually, I would just rely on Lysander to be able to help work around Jolteon, but in this deck, Pokemon Ranger not only helps with the Jolteon matchup, but helps with the Blizzard Burn tech that will helps with the blizzard burn negative effect lets you reset that and allows you to attack twice in a row one lysander because lysander is awesome and then i decided to throw a brox grit in this deck i am very uncertain as to whether or not i think i should keep it 
If you ask me, I think you should put one more Lysander and then get rid of the Brock's Grit. But overall, I've just had times where if a Lapras gets knocked out or a Glaceon or a Regice gets knocked out, I lose three energy and that's... I mean, this deck has plenty of energy to go around, but that's kind of a big deal and I like to be able to be able to put those things back in the deck to where Super Odd just doesn't suffice sometimes. So I threw a Brock's Grit in there just in case. However, I completely understand if you're like, yeah, that's kind of worthless. Super Odd gets me all I need and put in another Lysander. That's just kind of a card that I found that I actually use a decent amount in this deck. Three Fighting Fury Belt because all of our attackers are basic and we might as well give them longevity, especially when combined with Rough Seas. These suckers are not going to be going down in one hit. Well, actually, why did I click on Manaphy? That's the one of the last things you put a Fighting Fury Belt on. But even Regice gets 160 HP. Lapras gets an enormous 230. Glaceon gets us very solid 210. These things will not be going down in one hit. So Fighting Fury Belt plus Rough Seas is a fantastic combination for this deck. And then finally, 11 Water Energy. I mean, that's what this deck runs on. That's what you're going to be wanting all the time. And also to help with Max Elixir. So there's that. But anyway... Yep, this is the deck. I'm done rambling. Let's just go ahead and see this deck in action. Alrighty, we have found one against a um, MMO test dummy. So, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, looks like they are using an Eveltal Garbodor deck, so that could be kind of problematic for us. I mean, we really don't rely on abilities after first turn besides Manaphy, although, to be fair, the switching between Lapras is kind of the key thing for this deck so yeah I suppose Lapras will be kind of a big deal and okay I start with a an amazing hand it'd be uh that's actually a really 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 awesome hand it'd be a lot nicer if I just had a shaman as opposed to an ultra ball so that way I could attach all the energy and go for all the max elixirs but either way in a very good position um we won't have to worry about enhanced hammer from my opponent at all and oh boy so what do I want to get rid of I think the dive ball and one max elixir just because I want to have the guaranteed attachment from my hand so that I can put that on the Manaphy and then go for like an energy switch later but let's go ahead and play the Finding Fury Belt max elixir once okay we hit that can we hit another one because then I'll be able to attack next turn yes we do and then I can shaman for a fresh hand of six cards and Already three energy on board. That is exactly what you want with this deck. Let's play another Lapras, go for a Rough Seas. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's Shaman. Shaman for three more cards. I don't necessarily want a Sycamore this turn just because... I don't know. I feel like... I feel like having Sycamoring away two energy after I already had to uh, discard... Uh, it could be worse, but either way, I am just going to switch into my Lapras, I think, and then end my turn. That way I can just attach an energy and then Sycamore from there. So, I mean, I have the attack down. If I didn't have an attack for next turn, then I would have gone ahead and Sycamore. That way I could get a better hand, but there we go. Okay, my opponent will just end, I'll, well, end, not end. My opponent will end. I'll get a fresh hand of six cards and not have to discard all of those water energy. And, oh, that's actually really nice. So I get an energy switch, that way I can take an energy off the Manaphy and put it on one of my other Laprases. I have the uh, I have the manual attachment, that way I can attack this turn. And yeah, in a pretty good, pretty, pretty real, pretty really good position. <laughs> yeah, because that's, uh, that's grammatically correct, right? Pretty really good. But either way, I will be able to knock out my opponent next turn if they leave the Shaman in. Um, okay, looks like they are just going to go ahead and retreat into the Trevish, that's a smart play by my opponent, save the Shaman, save two prizes, make me Lysander up the Shaman if I want to knock it out, but I am just going to retreat into my Lapras, attach the energy, go for an energy switch, put the energy back onto my other Lapras, uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Ball, just kind of thin out my deck a little bit, just look at what I have, grab, grab Glaceon, I mean, I'm not going to be able to play anything. I am just thinning my deck out so that I can hopefully grab something better. And I will grab a Sycamore because I did not want to play the N. I did not want to give my opponent a fresh hand because they are down to four. And even though they probably have a supporter, at least this way I can force them to have... Well, at least I can force them to have the supporter or access to a supporter in their hand as opposed to just giving them a fresh hand. So what I am going to do, go ahead and do is 
How do I want to knock out this Trubbish? I think... So I don't have... Okay, because I don't have a Lapras up for next turn, ready to attack, I am just going to go ahead and go for the GX attack, which will... I mean, I won't get the Paralysis part of it, which is kind of... Which is kind of a big reason I think it's a D GX attack, because you have the guaranteed Paralysis. But either way, I really don't... There was no benefit to going for Blizzard Burn over the uh, GX attack. In fact, there are actually just a lot of negatives to going for it because then I wouldn't be able to attack the Shaman or whatever my opponent decided to bring out this turn. And really, Lapras's GX attack is one of the more mediocre ones. There are just so many outs to it. I just decided to use it. That way I can attack with the same Lapras twice in a row and while I could have... And also, I wouldn't have been able to knock out this Shaman with the uh, Blizzard Burn GX. Because the Shaman has a Fighting Fury belt on it, so I would have to go for... Oh, not the Blizzard Burn GX, uh, the Ice Beam GX. I, I would go for the Ice Beam GX, that way I can attack with the Blizzard Burn GX. There we go, I'm mixing up Lapras's attacks. But my opponent, very, very, very slow start, so that is very unfortunate for them. However, I mean, I have Rough Seas, I have everything I need. Uh, let's see, I am just going to go ahead and counter my opponent's Stadium. And then... I'm not going to Sycamore because I have the Pokemon Ranger in hand. I can just play that, be able to Blizzard Burn again next turn, and go from there. So, uh, I'm in, like I said, I'm in an awesome position. My opponent has absolutely nothing on board. They just have a Shaman out. They don't have any Pokemon. Well, they don't have any other Pokemon. They don't have any attackers. I have a Rough Seas. I have two Lapras. Pretty much ready to go. The one Lapras on the bench isn't necessarily ready to go because of... Uh, because it only has two energy, but I do have the third energy in my hand. I have them both Fighting Fury belted. I have the Manaphy set up, and I could set up the Regice, but I think at this point it's just better to swap between Lapras's and take Knockout after Knockout. So I think that's that's going to be the plan, and that's kind of the goal. This deck is just hit for 170 every single turn with Lapras and just swap between the two to be able to hit for more damage and then also rough seas off any damage your opponent can get onto a Lapras so basically between Lapras attacks in an ideal situation with this deck you would heal off 60 damage from each Lapras and the fact that it has a Fighting Fury Belt means it has 230 HP which makes it so incredibly bulky. I mean that thing is near impossible to take down in one hit which is why your opponent will have to rely on multiple hits which is where the rough seas really hinders them even more and it looks like my opponent is just going to unfortunately still have nothing so that really does sting for my opponent they're gonna shaman back into their hand uh get another dce back probably just promote yeah the baby evil tall but either way i'm you know i'm gonna have to take a prize on that thing so that's fine with me uh i am just gonna go ahead and play the pokemon ranger that way i have access to it later and also, because, I mean, I have a Lapras on the bench, ready to go, so I will just Blizzard Burn, knock out my opponent's baby Evil Tall, uh, take my third prize, or fourth prize, third to last prize, that's what I was trying to say. Get another Water Energy, I might as well try to power up Regice in the background, because, I mean, that's the only thing that could... Well, I mean, that thing just would stop Evil Tall Cold if the, he somehow managed to knock out both of my Laprases. So, I mean... I'm in a phenomenal position. My opponent has gotten absolutely nothing going, so that is very unfortunate for him. I'm not going to delude myself into thinking that Lapras has a uh, has a beneficial matchup against Evil Tall Garbodor because there's a reason that that deck is well was the best deck in the format. Are it's still up for debate since Sun and Moon have come out? If it still is, I think it kind of still is, but I mean again, very much up for debate. And, I'm, again, I'm not going to delude myself into thinking that Lapras has a beneficial matchup. My opponent has just gotten a very slow start, and we got about as perfect of a start as you could hope. I was able to Blizzard Burn turn 2. Well, I guess I technically Ice Beamed turn 2, but either way, exact same energy cost. And I just hit all my Max Elixirs very early, so perfect setup for me. Very, very, very suboptimal for my opponent. So, honestly, unless my opponent attaches a Fighting Fury Belt to his benched Evil Tall... I win the game right here. I mean, there's absolutely nothing my opponent can do. I mean, even if they Lysander something up, I have a Water Energy, or if they Escape Ropes, yeah, I guess Lysander, they still have their support for the turn. Even if they uh, 
manage to bring something else up. I have the water energy in my hand. I can just retreat. I can just attach it and then retreat into my Lapras and knock out one of the evil tall. So really the only thing that can save my opponent this turn is either getting down a uh, getting down a non-EX or slapping a Fighting Fury Belt. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, my opponent does get a Fighting Fury Belt onto the evil tall that's on the bench, super out some stuff back in. So they will at least buy themselves a turn. At the very least, that's what they've done. However, I think the fact that I have two Laprases set up ready to go will end the game and my opponent well i even top deck a lysander so i mean there's i mean i just got kind of lucky on that last top deck i wouldn't have been able to one shot it but i think i was still in a good enough position to where i'd win regardless but either way lysander just speeds up the process and lapras was able to take the first game over an eveltal garbador deck so i mean lapras obviously top tier obviously if it's better than the best deck in the format then that means lapras is the best deck in the format right completely kidding either way that match was that match showed you exactly how the setup was supposed to go but wasn't a great match overall in terms of back and forth so i'm going to go ahead and try to find another match with this deck Alrighty, we have found another one against a uh, unshattered and it looks like once again we are against a dark deck with garbador but instead of evil tall garbador this looks like a uh dark Rai or dark tina with garbador so uh, yeah, we do see the Salamence coin. Salamence was such an excellent addition to that deck. Unfortunately, it arrived just a little bit too late because now EXs are obsolete because everything is going to be GXs. From, from here on out, wow, voice crack, I am... Wow, that was so professional. Sorry about that, guys. But either way, I will start with the Lapras. I have a pretty solid starting hand. I actually... I'm kind of a fan of my starting hand, but at the same time, like, it could be better. Um, I will be able to get potentially another Lapras, maybe a Manaphy down. Really just depends on what I want to do. Uh, this is confirmed Dark Tina because, I mean, you see the Dark Cry and you see the Giratina. So, I mean, those combined are Dark Tina. Uh, <laughs> uh, we don't see a Garbodor yet. My opponent will end me, and I'm actually okay with this end because while I had a decent hand, it wasn't overwhelmingly good like there wasn't too incredibly much that i could do this hand i like a lot better assuming i can get a uh supporter off of the trainer's mail or a way to draw cards off of the trainer's mail like with a shaman or something to that effect well okay there we go don't even have to uh ultra ball for it but what i am gonna do i'm gonna prioritize reg ice in this match because usually dark tina doesn't have much to deal with reg ice if they do, it is usually like a uh, it's usually a single copy of Ranger, and even then, they don't play Pokemon Ranger all that often. But what I am gonna do is just attach the regular energy to the Lapras. It became a Fire Energy for a second. That was actually kind of cool. Uh, and I will grab another Max Elixir. See if I can get Red Ice powered up in one turn. I do hit one Max Elixir. Can I hit a second one? Uh, yes, I do. And then I'll be able to Shaman for a fresh six cards. And even if I can't get Regice powered up, I will be able to use Lapras's first attack to draw some more cards. Ooh, I get another uh, Max Elixir. Let's see if I can hit it. And I don't. Well, I mean, that's not the end of the world. Uh, unfortunately, I still don't have a supporter. But what I am going to go ahead and do is Nest Ball, get another Lapras out, and then collect, draw three cards, hopefully a supporter. Well, okay, there's a way to get a supporter right there. Glaceon, although... Uh, it, although it can really win some matchups almost single-handedly, this live, it really hasn't done much. I mean, really, it's just ended up being discard fodder, which is what you run into with this deck. Because it is kind of a water toolbox deck, you'll have some times where certain cards just really don't do much for you. Like, they'll help in certain matchups, and other times they'll just be discard fodder with, like, Ultra Ball and stuff like that. So my opponent does get another Dark Cry down. He will be able to hit me for some solid damage this turn, and please have another end. Okay, that works. Uh, another reason why Collect worked so well right there was because it drew, it not only drew me three cards, but it made my opponent a lot more likely to end me. And, oh, this is gorgeous. Because what I can do is send the Regice active, energy switch the water energy onto it, 
play the regular water energy onto my other Lapras that won't be damaged. Because, I mean, this Lapras will take a good amount of damage with Dark Pulse. I mean, 90... I mean, that's decent, I guess. That's not, like, a huge amount of damage. But that is still... That's still a good amount of damage. But what I can do, retreat into my Regice, play the water energy onto it, play the Fighting Fury Bell energy, switch the energy off of the damage Lapras onto the fresh Lapras. Go ahead and Trainer's Mail, see what I can get. I get a Fighting Fury Belt. That is phenomenal. I'm going to play that onto my other Lapras. And then Sycamore for a fresh hand and finally have a supporter in the discard pile. That way VS Seeker isn't just useless. And okay, yeah, let's go ahead and Super Rod. Go ahead and get back one of the one energy max elixir see if i can hit it i do not probably should have saved my probably should have saved my super rod then but oh well i will just resistance blizzard hit the dark cry for ah that's an s ball um hit the dark cry for a solid 80 damage set up a three hit ko and now my opponent is forced to have a pokemon ranger or an escape rope in order to be able to damage me this turn well I have to have a Lysander, Escape Rope, or Pokemon Ranger, and because he just played the Sycamore, obviously he won't be able to use any, either the Lysander or the, won't be able to use the Lysander or the, whatchamacallit, <laughs> Lysander or the Ranger, so he'll have to have an Escape Rope, and even then, okay, so I guess if he has a Float Stone and an Escape Rope, he'll be able to Escape Rope, I'll go into like my Lapras, he'll go into his Giratina, and then retreat back into the Darkrai and be able to hit me, so that's... Maybe that's what my opponent's going to do. Otherwise, he will just max elixir, probably hit the Giratina. Or I guess if he doesn't hit it, he can't do anything. So Dark Pulse will not do anything. Regice, despite being pretty much obsolete due to the fact that everything is GXs now as opposed to EXs, uh, still putting in work because EXs have not rotated out and some EXs are still very, very strong in the current format. And what I can do is actually so i could resistance blizzard or i could take a prize what i think i'm actually going to do is retreat go into my lapras play my energy switch put one energy from red ice onto lapras because i have the other grass in or not grass i have the other uh water in hand and then blizzard burn knock out the dark cry and this is why i love energy switch in this deck because you can have energy on a bunch of your pokemon and then just switch it around if you draw the energy switches to put it on the Pokemon that you need for a turn. So, I mean, like right there. I had a Regice completely powered up, able to attack. But I wouldn't have been able to take a knockout that turn because Resistance Blizzard only does like a maximum of 60. Or 80, sorry, not 60. Only does a maximum of 80 per turn. Lapras, in that situation, was able to take the rest of the damage and my opponent wasn't even able to attack me this turn so what i am going to go ahead and do is heal off the last of the damage off my lapras attach the energy to the reg ice and then go for a resistance blizzard keep my opponent from being able to hit me for this next coming turn and yeah set up another knockout with lapras later i can even start powering up my other lapras on the bench because i mean two laprases are better than one right and this way i can have back to back 170 uh 170 damage attacks and my opponent will have to play a pokemon ranger because we saw he does play it because it was discarded by a sycamore and if my opponent is able to play that he will be able to hit me but fortunately he won't be able to knock anything out because he'll only be able to hit for 110 and everything else and everything on my side has over 110 hit points regice has a whopping i believe it's 160 yeah so my opponent does play the Pokemon Ranger. That is a good play by them. Uh, be able to hit my Regice for some damage. But the thing is, he won't knock me out, and he'll have to go for another... Um, we'll have to go for another... Uh, what am I trying to say? We'll have to go for another Ranger in order to knock out the Regice later. Unfortunately, I don't have a Rough Seas in my hand. What I could do is Sycamore... Do I want to get rid of all this water energy? Uh, thing is, I think I'm just going to retreat into my Lapras, take the knockout with Blizzard Burn. I still have the Ice Beam GX for if I need it later. I mean, that's still definitely an option. Otherwise, I can just go back into my Reg Ice next turn and hit for a Resistance Blizzard. And okay, we do just win because my opponent concedes the combination of Lapras and Reg Ice proved to be too much. We are able to overcome Dark Tina 
wasn't able to set up the Trubbish or the Garbodor, which would have caused a lot of problems for me because I wouldn't have been able to switch as freely as I did. But either way, do take that match. It was a really just kind of a perfect showing of how the uh, of how Waterbox is supposed to of how Lapras Waterbox anyway is supposed to work. Attack with Regi, stall for a turn, switch into Lapras, hit for the rest of the damage, take the knockout, rinse and repeat against EX heavy decks, and then you can switch between two Laprases to just hit for 170 each turn, which is very hard to keep up with. And yeah, that was the deck, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Leave your answer to the comment or the question of the day in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.